Um, hi, my name is uh, Philip Burke and I'm from Tipperary Institute in Ireland and I'm founder of Computer Games Festival Games Flat. I also lecture in a third level college, Tipper Tipperary Institute, mm -hmm. and uh, the subject area that I specialize in is games design and development. Okay. Uh, can you tell us about the game you're preparing for this conference and what are, when are you going to announce it and what does it contain? Okay. So what we're, what we're doing as part of the actual workshops uh, over the next couple of days mm -hmm. is we're actually going to prepare a game um, around a, one of, one of your, your desert animals, um, okay. a gerbil, and also uh, a desert fox. And we're going to have the, mm -hmm. uh, the actual desert fox uh, chasing that gerbil um, around the desert. Mm -hmm. And uh, people involved in the actual workshops are going to help me uh, prepare that game. Okay, so many teachers want to ask why should they use games in education? So what benefits can it have for them? Uh, games really bring all the subject areas together. Mm -hmm. uh, everything from uh, English, Arabic, to for, for preparing the actual stories for the actual games, uh, right through to maths, science, mm -hmm. um, even, you know, art is very important, music mm -hmm. is very important. These are all the important components of the game. So it, it, it covers all the subjects. Mm -hmm. So how can games impact children? Their imagination, their motivation for learning, how can it impact them? I think when they actually have to solve, you know, this is creating games and creating good games is, 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 is about actually coming up with innovative ideas. So mm -hmm. I think that's the first thing is that it, it helps them to develop that process of, of, of becoming innovators. Mm -hmm. And also they have to develop their problem solving skills as well because mm -hmm. building games involves lots of things. Everything, as I said, like from storytelling mm -hmm. right through to um, the actual technology challenges that you might actually face in actually uh, preparing and preparing and, and getting a game released. Mm -hmm. So you discussed the camera-based controllers and how they're used in games. So for those who didn't attend the session, can you elaborate on what they are? Um, there, is, there, is, there, there are companies working on camera-based controllers. One of those, uh, the most important one at the moment is a, a project called uh, Project Metal. Mm -hmm. And already I believe there are, there, are, you know, there are games being prepared for this particular platform. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting from the point of view of it actually removes the actual need for um, the, hand, the, the typical hand-based controller, and I'm 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 really looking forward to actually seeing uh, Project Natal re released at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So you discussed the uh, 4D experience of, uh, that the students went uh, experienced the mm -hmm. four dimension. So what is 4D and how is it different from 3D and 2D? Well, f for, for me, 4D is. Uh, basically using all your senses either um, to interact and, and, and play the game mm. or that the actual gameplay uses your se uses your senses. Mm. Uh, an example of that is where uh, my own students this year in preparing um, their game for the actual ga this year's game slot is they mm. actually used a neural impulse actuator mm -hmm. as the actual game control. So essentially what happened was they, they were actually using their mind mm -hmm. and their, 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 their thoughts uh, to actually control um, the, the character in game. Mm -hmm. So also one of the points you discussed is the use of games in mathematics and how they relate it to matrix. So also can you briefly explain that? Everything in math is, 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 is important from the point of view of, of games development. We mentioned everything from linear equations to right through to uh, matrix and uh, matrix transforms. Mm. And matrix transforms is the most important thing from the point of view of 3D games. Mm. Um, and I think in actually, if, if teachers can elaborate a little bit more to students mm. from the point of view of where, what they're actually, um, what they're covering in math and where it actually relates to real, real world situations like developing games, mm. I think students will actually begin to uh, appreciate more how, how important uh, mathematics is. Okay, so for a student who wants to develop his own game and for a teacher who wants to embrace games in education, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to each sector or each segment of this? Okay. One of the things that we found very su successful in Ireland is we, as part of Gamesflow, we run an event called the XMA Ireland Challenge. Mm. Uh, not only do we involve uh, students from colleges and universities, but we also involve second level schools. Mm. And I've seen kids uh, from 13 years of age create you know, come up with really innovative ideas as regards games and, and actually implement those. So do everything from preparing the music, preparing the art, mm. to actually programming those games. And one of, the, one of the actual tools that really helps with that is a, uh, is a development environment called XNA Game Studio. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, you also discussed the tips for create, for designing a game, mm -hmm. and there were really uh, important tips regarding harmony, regarding audio, and having kids not to be so so involved with the game because they may get tired of it. So can you highlight on these points? It's it's important when you're actually coming up with your ideas for for the games that you actually test those um, mm -hmm. test those against as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. The longer you're actually involved in the actual process of of creating your own game. The, the less objective you become. So that's why it's really important to bring in new people all the time, look at how they interact with the, with the game that you're actually playing, mm. and see that it's, it, it, it continues, continues to be fun. So mm -hmm. that's one of, the, one, one, one of the key things. Okay. Uh, and uh, you, you asked about harmony as yeah. well. That is one of the most difficult things to achieve. It's that harmony between the music, between the actual gameplay, mm. and, and the, even just the balance of the game. Getting that actually right is, 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 is a challenge, and that's where you need feedback from as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. Also, one type of game to discuss is role-playing games, so how are they different from the usual games we know? Okay. Um, the, the, when I was actually talking about role-playing games, mm -hmm. I mentioned one in particular where we, uh, we did a collaboration project with a lo local theatre who was uh, who were running a, a youth outre outreach programme. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we actually uh, during that summer workshop, we actually built a game, mm -hmm. a role-playing game, mm -hmm. and we also created a, an acting a, a script for for, uh, for the game as well. Mm. And we combined both gameplay and actual theatre performance, mm. and it, that was pretty unique. Uh, I, I haven't heard of it happening before. Mm. Uh, literally, we had um, thirty to forty people on stage, and the audience were actually controlling. The next acts and the next scene that would actually happen out happen out on stage. Mm -hmm. So, how important is audio to the game? Can we have games without audios, and will they be successful? Audio, I suppose, you, there's a couple of things. There's the, the the music that you hear, or the actual audio cues that that, that you hear. Mm. I, I think it's an absolute component of, from the point of giving feedback to the user. Mm -hmm. um, they must understand place and time. And one of the ways in which people understand uh, place is f from what they hear ar mm -hmm. around them. Uh, I think one of the examples that we gave in the workshop today was if, if a conversation is happening on my right side, I'd like to actually hear that in, 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 in the earphone on the right. Mm -hmm. And that, all those, all those uh, cues build up to create that immersive, uh, that immersive gaming environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, many students would, like to, would think that if they create a game, they would never compete with multinational expensive games. So how can a student make his game, even though it's simple, but make it unique? One of the examples that we mentioned in the workshop is uh, what we participate in is, is an event called Global Game Jam, which is run by the International Games Developers Association. Mm. And what happens as part of Global Game Jam, over 48 hours, you actually build a game. So mm. literally on 5 p.m. on a Friday, you get a team for a game. The team this year was actually Deception. Mm. And then by 5 p.m. on Sunday, you actually have to have a finished title. Mm. So those type of events really focus on innovative gameplay mm. um, and getting, uh, as, as one of the actual keynotes um, Kyle Gabler mentioned, mm. uh, it's, it's getting that idea as pro uh, across to users as, or to gamers as quickly as possible. Mm. So as quickly and as easily as possible. So one of the tips you mentioned is for any game creator is to avoid expectations. So what did you mean by that? Uh, so, sorry, could you repeat that question? Yeah. One of the tips for designing a game was to avoid expectations. So how can a game designer avoid an expectation? What does that point uh, okay. mean? Okay, I, I think that's more to do with resetting expectations. So okay. that if you're a small team, well then, you know, you can't do, you can't create a multi-million multi um, euro or dirham uh -huh. uh, game. So yeah. it's to actually set expectations for the actual size mm -hmm. of the team that you have and the time that you have available as well. Mm -hmm. So final question, you mentioned that uh, Pac-Man is a, is a game that has been played 10 billion times. So mm -hmm. why do you think people frequently play the game, although it's very simple, and there are other competing games with it? So why is this game so popular in your opinion? Um, I think the people that really get into it, Pac-Man was one of the first games that uh, appealed to both um, male and female. So that was one of the first things that happened uh, with Pac-Man. Mm. It's just a simple, it's a very simple game and it can be actually played by 
a three-year-old or an 80-year-old, mm. and they can they can get enjoyment. So that's the first thing. Mm. The second thing I think is everybody aspires to get that that perfect score, which I believe is uh, three million mm. three hundred thirty-three. Um, thousand three hundred and sixty or something like that okay. so every everybody aspires to get that perfect score mm. um, by completing all 255 levels on one life so mm. that's that's that, you know it's just one of those it's one of those really rich uh, classic games mm -hmm. thank you so much for this insightful interview and we wish you best of luck in the conference thanks listen, a lot thank you very much